I'm going to give you an example of how difficult it is to fix back pain in today's modern world. So this is a story about a young athlete uh, that I just had today. I thought it was an extremely interesting case and it's going to be a difficult to get this patient better but the challenge challenge accepted right but i'm going to tell you what goes through the process of really solving long term back pain how do you get it better forever we've got some challenges so here's the story 15 year old uh, back pain back pain for many years the story is that they are a swimmer and uh, certain strokes hurt, such as the butterfly. Running hurts, uh, and they're doing exercises in their dry training. They call it dry training in um, swimming when they're doing exercises not in the pool. This patient has had pain for probably about five years. So can you imagine having pain at 10 years old and by the age of 15, you've had back pain for one third of your life and you're only 15 years old. I mean, what's wrong with this picture, right? Doesn't remember when the back pain started uh, in terms of there was no initial injury. Although the mom thinks there was an injury when the kid was at a uh, jumpy jump, one of these places with the trampolines. And very likely that's possibly how it occurred. So that's the history I was given no numbness, no tingling down the leg. So if there's no numbness, no tingling down the leg, what does that indicate? Already we know it's not a pinched nerve. The patient does not have sciatica. So we're dealing with primarily a musculoskeletal uh, back problem. Now, for many people watching on YouTube, you think to yourself, well, why don't you just give her the ring dinger? Or why don't you give her uh, a traction device? Or why don't you uh, do these all these different uh, cracking se uh, sessions and things like that. Just crack her back and it'll be better. That is absolutely not what's going to happen in this particular case. So when, when I examined the patient, the patient when asked to bend forward and try to touch the toes, couldn't get past the knees. Now what does this indicate? Why is this important? If a patient can't get past the knees, the average person would think, oh, stretch the hamstrings. That is absolutely not what I'm going to do. When a patient cannot get that far down, you can analyze the hamstrings by having them lie on their back and testing the hamstring length, of which hers were normal. It was actually a protective spasm in her back to try to protect her body from bending too far forward. Usually this is the first clue that a person has some type of either disc injury where the fibers around the disc start to become damaged. It's like a very bad sprained ankle just in your spine. The other situation that it can be is an instability, again, resulting from possible old strain that there's actually micro movements in her spine that are, are irritating her spine and thus her body goes into this protective mechanism and she can't bend forward. Okay, so we got that exam. The second part of the exam is I asked her to bend backwards and sure enough, I already knew what was gonna happen. L4 and L5 and L5 and S1 had no ability to extend backwards. So instead of rounding her spine like this, her spine just kind of pancaked like this and right at L3, she got pain. This is a condition where when you see an instability at L3 because of uh, a restriction at L4 and L5 or L5 and S1, they are, therefore she gets pain. And this totally will explain why she hurts when she's running, why she hurts when she's doing the butterfly, and the dry land exercises I'm gonna get into. That's very fascinating, the dry exercises. I'm gonna sh share with you the experience that I'm gonna uh, teach this patient. So in this particular case, I already know that she has an instability at L3, likely an old uh, chronic repetitive strain of the fibers of the disc. I already know where I'm going with it. So then we do what's called restriction palpation, where I actually move the patient's spine, I sit them down, and you've seen this in other videos that I've done, and I will actually use my thumb and motion palpate and analyze each individual motion, bending forward, bending backwards, side to side, rotation. 
I will check all those movements of the spine and I can pinpoint exactly what is the limiting motion that stops her spine from moving well. And in this particular case, it was L5. L5 was not bending laterally to the right or to the left. It was not extending, but it was flexing forward. Interesting, fascinating. So those are the motions that are restricted most. However, before we did anything, we sent the patient for some x-rays. The reason why is because the young age, the chronic nature of her condition, as well as it's kind of destroying her life. If she did a run or did the butterfly stroke, she wouldn't be able to move for about a three or four days before she could then continue. And I told the mother, well, how much longer are you going to allow her to do, this, do these exercises before you realize it's probably damaging her? That's the hardest question right there. The x-rays come back and of course there are what are called Schmorl's nodes and a little bit of a disc height narrowing between L4 and L5. Fascinating, at 15 years old. So now let's get into it. First of all, before you ever do any type of treatment on a patient, you need a working diagnosis. You need a reason to do the adjustment or do the therapies. You need some type of reason why you're doing a procedure. It's not to crack her back. It's not to give her the crack hurt around the world or some, something ridiculous like that. And I'm going over this for a reason because the only adjustment that she needed was an L5 adjustment to create lateral bending. That's the only adjustment that she needs. And if it's done gently with finesse, it literally looks boring on, an, on a video. But the key to helping this patient is going to be in the exercises. The exercises are important. So I started to ask the patient and the mother uh, that was in the office with her, what are the exercises that bother you the most? And of course, the Russian twists. The Russian twists, in my humble opinion, are one of the stupidest exercises that you could do because if done properly, maybe they're okay. If done improperly, they could be disastrous. And this is a prime example of this. Typically with a Russian twist, the patient is not using good form. They're not arching their back, so their belly is out. They're rounding their spine, and then they're twisting their spine. And the mechanism by which you injure a disc, which is her diagnosis, by the way, She's developing early stage end plate damage to the disc as well as the lamina of the disc are starting to separate and decay. So she's developing degenerative disc disease at the early stages. That's the diagnosis. So Russian twists are an absolute no-no if you have degenerative disc disease. And it should be a no-brainer because when she does the Russian twists, she has more back pain for about three or four days and can't compete in swimming. So the dry land exercises, of course, we asked. She does Russian twists. She does crunches. Crunches where she comes up and alternates and twists her spine even more. So at that point, I already knew, I've heard enough, we need to revamp the dry land exercises. Bird dogs, learning how to hinge at the hips and not the back, which is exactly what um, we did in the office the first day. I taught her how to control her abdomen so that it's contracted so that when she arches backwards and arches forwards, there's no motion of the spine. You need to give the spine rest in order to allow the fibers of the disc to scar over, and that's what can take time. So bird dogs learning to hinge at the hips, planks and side planks. Those are the exercises. And these exercises, by the way, are free on my YouTube channel. If you just go to the playlist section, I believe they're number two to five, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. I made the videos a long time ago, but you just go on my, you're already on my YouTube channel. Just go to the YouTube channel, go to playlists, hit the area that says core training, 
There's only like 21 exercises, I'm sorry, 21 videos on there. You should watch them all because it explains why these exercise work, exercises work so well. These exercises were promoted by a guy named Stuart McGill who is a professor at a university in Canada who is the leading researcher in the world when it comes to spinal disease. I don't know any better source than that. Now of course, here is the biggest challenge of all. The biggest challenge is not the knowledge, it's not knowing the diagnosis. Because my diagnosis, I don't know, I think anyone can do that. It's not like I'm a smart guy that figured something out that no one can figure out. This was, quite frankly, an easy diagnosis to make. On paper, it's easy to fix. You need L5 to move, so you do an adjustment to L5, you teach them these exercises, good to go, right? The biggest problem is the coach. The coach is giving exercises to all the athletes on the swim team, irregardless of each athlete's individual problems. Herein lies the problem. How do you get that coach to drop the ego and unlearn or learn more information about why Russian twists are probably not recommended for swimming, and in particular, this particular athlete? How can we get that coach to stop coaching the kids to do the Russian twists? I'm fully convinced that if Russian twists were just called twists, no one would do them. The Russian twists have this mystique, it looks good, it looks cool to actually do Russian twists, but the reality is the research doesn't support why Russian twists should be done on anyone, especially people that have a disc injury. So the biggest challenge of this is getting the coach to understand the mechanism of injury of this particular athlete and finding replacement exercises, possibly learning so much that they don't do it for the rest of the team. That's nearly impossible, especially when the coach has a great reputation or is a likable person. It would almost be as if I said something like the knee over toes guy is making a mistake or Athena X is making a mistake. That type of thing. These are popular people on YouTube. I'm just going to ignore the phone. These are popular people on YouTube and put on a pedestal and even if they are making a, a mistake, you cannot judge these people because then you look like you're wrong. Thus, the biggest challenge of getting a patient better is when you have to question the authority figure of this particular swim team. And that's going to be probably the most difficult part of getting the patient better. My experience as a chiropractor, I've been doing this for like 26 years, is to give the patient, or at least the patient's parent, because the patient, they just want to get better. They, they just want pain relief. They don't really want to be they don't want a PhD in understanding bi spinal biomechanics with the disc, but I have found that when people have chronic problems, it's important to explain to the mother or the parent what is going on, why it's going on, give a rationale as to why you're making the recommendations that you're recommending, and simply let the chips fall where they may, because sometimes you cannot question social media authority. Now, if you have any questions in regard to uh, your particular back problem, you're free to leave comments in this down below and I may get to them or they may inspire other videos that I may produce. If you're a Patreon and you have a specific question, I will make a video just for you. There's a link down below to become a Patreon if you like. The last thing is, if you want to get a hold of me and have a consultation, we do Zoom appointments with patients over Zoom, or we can do a telephone consultation. If you hang tight, wait for the advertisement, watch the advertisement for magnesium, and then at the end of the video, you can learn more about how to contact me on Zoom and thus discuss your case individually. Lower blood pressure, enhanced heart health, protect your arteries, improve your energy, improve your bone health, help migraines, chronic pain, and depression, reduce artery stiffness, and better sleep. 
These are only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the benefits of magnesium. The soil sucks, we don't eat enough organic vegetables, and that is why it's so hard to get enough magnesium in our diet. Now the supplements that I take are from the video sponsor, Magnesium Breakthrough, and they have a great product that has seven different types of magnesium in it, all listed right here. Now when you get all these major forms of magnesium, then your body really starts to improve, and that is when the magic happens. I take two tablets at nighttime, it gives me 500 milligrams of magnesium per day, and it really helps me sleep like a baby. There will be a discount code and the link for this type of magnesium down in the description. If you have specific questions in regard to blood pressure, your own health and wellness, we actually do Zoom appointments as well as telephone appointments. We do these Zoom and telephone appointments from all around the world. So you're more than welcome to call our office, schedule an actual Zoom or a telephone consultation with me, and what we're gonna do is we are going to section off a piece of our day just to speak to you and answer all your questions. So if you're interested in that, there's a link down below. You can get to my website and then just contact us. Now there is a fee for a Zoom or telephone consultation, so it's not free, but I can promise you this, you're gonna get your money's worth.